the rather square format of the television screen to create the oblong format of what we call widescreen filming. The term letterbox is because it looks like a letterbox. It looks like a slot you drop an envelope in. All films made from 1953 on for the past 50 years have been made in one widescreen form or another. Whether it's just normal widescreen or the 70 millimeter or uh, cinemascope or Panavision. There are many things that go into the making of a movie. One of those things is the shape of the movie. How wide is the screen? And how does that impact the shots that make up the movie? However, the widescreen process does not fit on the normal television screen. So what is often done is what's called a pan and scan, where they lop off the sides. Pan and scan is when they try to make a widescreen film, a rectangle, fit into a square format on a television screen. And that is, in a sense, technically redirecting the movie. Take a film like Ben-Hur, the Wayne Wyler film, the chariot sequence is one of the greatest action sequences ever done in movies. Ben-Hur is driving four horses. Very often you'll find that there'll only be two in the frame. You lose the effect of all the stunt work in that sequence, which is one of the, the great climactic sequences in all cinema, reduced to a confused blur. I get the heebie-jeebies thinking about Ben-Hur panned and scanned. It isn't Ben-Hur, it becomes a whole movie. Images collectively add up to something. They add up to something when one frame contains many elements. Your eye sees all of them, some of them peripherally, and some of them as a point of focus. And collectively, it creates a mood. Every shot in a movie is thoughtfully composed, and the composition of that shot is approached the same way that a painter approaches the composition of a, of a painting. And when a technician takes a completed movie and pans and scans, he's moving the camera defensively rather than artistically and violating all the creativity that went into composing that shot. If you pan a scan Lawrence of Arabia, you lose the desert. The director David Lean spent two years making the film. The compositions that are made, the sense of space and being lost in space, and the vastness of it, the isolation of a singular figure, is the dramatic essence of that motion picture. And when you look for the camera, you know that this size communicates and this size doesn't. And so lean shows a size that communicates. Now, when you pirate the section out of this, just the center, you're not getting the experience. And in the case of a, a musical, when you take a um, classic film, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, the choreography in the picture is really composed for the wide screen. It develops character. It takes over the story. And uh, if uh, you don't see those dance sequences in widescreen, you lose what the director and the cinematographer were trying to tell you as a part of the story. You uh, blow up part of the frame so that the faces of the actors are a little fuzzier. They aren't as clear because you're enlarging the frame. If you don't see the full frame on widescreen, you lose the emotional impact of the picture. Imagine The Last Supper, let's say, to take an obvious example. Do you care if you see six disciples or twelve disciples? You know, you're still seeing Jesus in the middle, but you wouldn't be seeing six of the disciples and how they react. Well, that, in fact, is what happens with Pan and Scan. And Without seeing the full frame, you're not getting the whole story. You're not getting all the information. Become used to those uh, black bars on top and bottom, and please remember that you're seeing the entire picture. You're seeing the entire story.